Well, we're all human, so that means none of us are safe from periods of lost income due to health crisis, job loss, or other life transitions during our working years. And if you're one of the many dealing with this setback right now, our next guest can help. Ted Beck is the president and CEO of National Endowment for Financial Education. So Ted, tell me, uh, what do the studies show? How likely are we, are we to face financial setback at some point in our life? Well, it's really not a question of if, it's when. Uh, the research tells us that 96 percent of, of men between ages 25 and 70 suffer four or more instances of uh, income shock during their careers, and that's defined as a drop of 10 percent in their income year over year. And all, actually over 60 percent of people are out of work for more, more than a year. So the probability is very high, and you, you touched on it a second ago, that the causes are job loss, uh, health issues, and actually divorce. Uh, if you look at a near-term uh, study, we asked people over the last year, well, have you suffered some sort of surprise? And we found that, again, almost two-thirds had. And those are the things we all live with. Uh, car broke down, so there's a bill. Something happened to the house, or you had a medical bill you weren't expecting. So things you hadn't planned for came in, so the probability is very high. Uh, and these are things we just have to plan for. Yeah, well, with that said, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's inevitable, as you say, 96%. Um, so what do, what do the studies show of how prepared people are in America? Well, only about half of the population has any sort of emergency fund. And interestingly, a lot of people who even have emergency funds sometimes don't use them because they want to make sure they have that money in the bank and instead they use credit cards or borrow from friends and families. So you know, one of the key things is it's okay to use an emergency fund for an emergency and then just try to rebuild it. Now, we've got a really unique opportunity here, and that's around the new tax bill. So many people are going to be seeing an increase in their take-home pay starting in the next few weeks. So if you are suddenly getting $100 or more a month that you hadn't gotten previously, you might use some of that money to start that emergency fund or increase it. And it's okay to start small. You know, f set a goal of $500 to $1,000, and that, that gets the ball rolling and it gets used to the process. Also look at your credit cards to see if there's something where you're carrying a balance where there's a really high interest rate. So this is a way to kind of pay yourself first by eliminating some of that and paying it down. So get ahead of the game and, and try to use this cash flow improvement uh, to set yourself up for more success down the road. Yeah, that, that's the trick, right? That's the, if, when you get the extra money and not to uh, just say, oh, great, now I have extra money to spend. Uh, do you personally have any tips for folks out there? I mean, if they, the extra money comes in, some different ways that you, uh, that you save. Well, I, the, what I try to really do is make sure we've got a budget. And uh, this is something that is work, uh, but we sit down and, and uh, in my family, we make sure we talk about it openly. Talking to your family about money issues in a constructive way, not a confrontational way, and then you know, decide, you've got this extra cash flow, what should we do? So the whole family knows. Uh, th these are family issues and they should be well known b between you and a partner or a spouse. That's great advice. Yeah, get everybody involved so that uh, they know they know when the money goes, it goes for all of us. Um, great advice. Appreciate the info. And where can our viewers go to get all this uh, in one place? You can go to smartaboutmoney.org. That's our website. We're a nonprofit organization. Nobody's going to try to sell you anything. That information is strictly to help you. And a special thanks to National Endowment for Financial Education for bringing us that great information. All right.